Ah, oh, hell. I'm in the wrong game again. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's Southern Mountains, what of the gaming drag today? I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Echo Route 65. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> I can't help but shift nervously, unsure of what to do with my hands or the mango. He does a little huff. I know what it, well, I know what that is, Chase. I'm not that naive after growing up with you guys. It's really bothering me that I can't read his expression right now. So do you like any boys in particular? I looked at TJ, speechless. After the initial surprise, he seems completely unfazed. I mean, you guys talk about each other as a, you know, parts a lot. I didn't know if that was part of it, but I, I guess it might have been? I could practically feel the burning of TJ's cheeks from here. I quickly throw up my hands. Whoa, no, that's just guy talk. I don't think the other guys in the group are gay. Like, what are even the chances of that? Yeah, what are the chances of all of them being gay? Despite the, ch despite the fact that I'm pretty sure most of them are. Not like, at least by. I know Flynn is super gay. I decided to dodge his inquiry about who I like. That's a whole another kernel of, kernel of, kernel of, I'm about to say kernel of scorn. Kernel of corn, as my grandma used to say. Probably not very high, but I don't really know much about that sort of thing. Outside of what they'll tell you at church, you mean. I see TJ visibly recoil, then recombobulate. That's not what our church is like. I mean, if you went again, you'd know. One of our youth pastors, Asha, is one of, the, is one of those biosensual types, even. Biosensual. Bisexual. Yeah, that! She doesn't talk about it much. She's just, you know, normal. And you're normal, so that's good. I find myself smirking a lot. The way he's describing this to be reassuring is his, in his, his usual TJ-ish way. It is actually kind of cute. Only God can really judge us for this sort of stuff, I think. People judging can be just like an excuse to be mean. I could start reciting verses to you about it, but I doubt you'd like to hear that. I'm alright. I pause. Well, actually, no I'm not. TJ tilts his head. For some reason, his blue eyes flick toward the mango in my grasp. I guess the problem is that my parents found out about me being like this in a really bad way that made a bad first impression, you know? What happened? Again, I keep my tongue still, trying to go over in my head how best to put this. I wish I had practice for this moment a little more. I don't know if you should hear about this sort of thing stuff, TJ. He steps forward, closer. We're about a foot and a half apart now. I'm not a baby. I want to help, please. It's the least I could do. I stare a little wide-eyed up at him, and he covers his face with his sheeted arms. I'm sorry, Chase. I can hear the quivering in his voice. There's a strange amount of intensity from the links. I decide to just be blunt. I got caught watching gay pornography on the computer this morning. That's how my parents found out. What? That certainly shocked him. He sniffed, seemingly resisting the urge to wipe his nose against his costume. I don't... We're interrupted by the, by the approaching sound of heavy footfalls. TJ blanches, physically covering his muzzle with his paws. Oh wow, Leah looks a lot different. Chase! The familiar russet-colored wolf emerges from around the corner, his red eyes flicking, flicking to me from... Flicking to from me... Flicking to... Flick, blah! Flicking from me to TJ and finally to the mango in my lap. Uter madre otter. TJ looks at me worriedly, straightening himself up. TJ, tease, your mom's here. You better get to her before she comes in. Oh, uh, th okay. Thanks, Leo. Are you gonna be okay? He nods, stepping over and patting the lynx's shoulder. I look down and notice that his knuckle is matted with dried blood. Don't worry about me, huh? It's you two little adventurous scamps that need to take care of. They need to take care. He gives a little nod in my direction. I make what I think is a smile. Jud though judging by the wolf's concerned look, it didn't come out right. Quickly, TJ quickly hustles his way outward nearly running into a boar fellow passing by. I can hear him apologizing profusely, and the boar saying something about Casper needs to chill the fuck out. Meanwhile, Leo is gawking at me, his eyes intense, searching. I swallow, clearing my throat. The hoarseness is gone, but the pain everywhere else is everywhere else sure isn't. Hey, Leo. He folds his arms across his chest, leaning against the windowed wall beside me. There's a brief silence, and I can feel his gaze still upon me. How did this happen? Why was he... Why were you two here? Leo's accent is thick now as he tries to speak faster than he can process the words in his head. Part of the question has me concerned, though. Just you two? Where's Carl? He was with me before. Well, before that dick with the trucker hat hit me. I see Leo's jowls rear back in silent snarl. He looks down the hallway. He starts to shout at someone named Amelia, though I quickly realize he's speaking Spanish. A feminine voice down the hall retorts, also in Spanish. Leo looks back ahead and grunts, closing his eyes for a moment. Then, rather suddenly, they reopen, the big wolf turning to me. Wait, you said Carl was here? 
I nod, then regret it because my head feels like a mashed apple. I haven't seen him since lunch. He was. Leo doesn't actually look surprised at the reveal, though visible guilt hangs heavy upon his usually confident face. He doesn't immediately respond, instead staring at my battered self in silence. My phone vibrates, though when I check my pockets it isn't there. There is a palpable, sheepish moment when my ears flick towards the source. Leo. Um... The wolf blinks and awkwardly hands me my phone from his own pocket. We had to call TJ's mom. You're the one with the phone that can get the signal pretty much anywhere, so I tried yours. I sigh, pulling up my phone. I'm sorry, I just got signal. Please be okay, dude. It's fine now. TJ's getting picked up. I'm here with Leo. I hear the sound of someone filling with a stereo and auxiliary cord on the factory floor. Some arguing about music choice and ensues. It seems that some people are still around for the party, after all. So, uh, what all do you remember out of curiosity? I don't have amnesia, so relax, whatever your name is. <laughs> hey, I felt the back of your head, Pachika. You've got a welt the size of a goose egg. I reach up and run my fingers over my scalp, the bump rather prominent. All right, well, I regale him with the events of the night after TJ's bullying. Those townie shits were saying you were put you, you were pushers trying to harass Heather for some debts. Fucking what? Yeah, I don't know, Otter. Fuck. I kept, I kept calling you. Second now. Water time. He looks surprised and scowls at the concrete floor between his feet. I should have been there to protect all of you. It seems like someone won the battle for the ox cord in the other room as the music starts up again. Yep, still vampire culty. <sighs> well, I got hit so hard the sky turned red for a bit. Leo's eyebrows raise some. I see his eyes move toward my head bump again. I remember stumbling around outside, looking for you and Carl. I felt like I was walking around for ages. The last thing I remember was a van. I see Leo shift, his shoulders raising up as high as they can go, a thing he does when he's tense. He looks at me, expectant. See anything else? My brow furrows as I try to recall exactly what transpired. I remember it felt so much different than it does now in hindsight. I think I must have passed out then. Everything else is too hazy to recall. Recall without sounding insane is more like it. Leo's shoulders lower. He seems to be in thought now. I found you outside on the road. I thought you had been hit by a car or something, and when I got to TJ, he wouldn't stop crying and smelled like booze. Not that I'm trying to sound like your mom's, eh, but you had me crazy worrying. He rubs at his raw knuckles. Got it into that got it into with that fox guy after that. It has been a uh weird night. Why are you even here, man? He's taken visibly off guard by that question. The people here are friggin' nuts! He sighs and slowly lowers himself to a sitting position against the wall on the floor. He motions for me to do the same next to him, and I do, dusting away any leftover broken glass first, though. A few people from the football team were going. Also, this one person invited me, and I wasn't going to tell them no. I'm about to ask who that was, but I'm interrupted fairly quickly. I was around the corner a few minutes ago. I overheard your little talk with TJ. I feel a cold tingle creep from my spine to my fingertips at those words. I should be feeling angry at this complete invasion of my privacy, but I don't. I just feel paralyzed. I've known Leo since he didn't speak a lick of English, playing video games with me and Jasmine after school. He'd just imitate what we said with a big dumb smirk on his muzzle as if he was saying something profound. I remember he got really hooked on the phrase, double jump that, double jump that sucker. I had been yelling at, yelling at Jazz for like three hours when we were trying to beat this platformer game I forgot the name of. From then on, every time one of us was feeling down or facing some challenge, he'd tell us to double jump that sucker with that same smirk. Look over to Leo now, trying to gauge his feelings, but his expression is indiscernible. Fucking TJ? You dropped this shit about how uh, about <laughs> you dropped this shit about you on him of all people? You know you can talk to me. I wouldn't have even gone to this thing. He gestures to our surroundings. Two girls I haven't seen before walk by us in the hall without even a passing glance. I look down, staring at my paws. I went from having the chills to feeling like my face is on fire. I shift some upon the concrete floor. I, uh... I try waiting for the girls nearby to be completely out of earshot, but they stop in the hall and start showing, showing each other something on their phones. Leo follows my gaze, letting out a quiet huff. Come with me. He rises up to his feet, pulling me up by my wrist. Not having much choice as I'm tugged like a rag doll, I comply, my mango falling to the wayside. Winding our way through the remnants of the partygoers, I fail to recognize anyone. Mm. Lash of the coffee, done. One or two say hi to Leo as we pass, though most outright ignore me. I'm increasingly self-aware of how plain I look in contrast to the ripped, played, donning, pierced face and spiked hair crowd. 
The t-shirt and cargo shorts look must not really be at, be in at the moment. We stop finally in front of one of the dark back exits. There doesn't seem to be food, booze, or drugs in this part of the factory, so we're alone. Once again, Leo turns his expectant gaze upon me, his brow knit. However, by now, my nerves have evened out slightly, and I decide to counter the earlier question. Why do you care so much that I told TJ and not you? You didn't tell me about all this. So you're queer now, huh? I get that. Just fuck, are you trying to put the moves on TJ now or something? What the hell? I'm not trying to court him. I just needed somebody to talk to, okay? What about Flint? Are you and him, uh, you know, thing? I stare at Leo, wide-eyed and gobsmacked. Where are you getting that idea from? He's not gay. He is. What? He screws boys. Lots of them. I thought you knew. I don't speak to Flynn as much as we did when we were younger, especially since what happened at the lake. He usually goes off and does his own thing as, uh, as of late, extra moody-like. Leo would tease that he's gone through an emo phase. Meanwhile, Carl says he's just Asperger's and french fries. I guess I haven't really talked with him personally enough to see past that. Have you? Have I what? Screwed boys. My eyes bulge in such a sharp reaction that even Leo holds up the flats of his paws defensively. Shit, alright, you really are new to this, huh? You could say that, yeah. My parents didn't know until this morning. Or, I guess, last morning now. I heard that. Real, that's real, real rough, yeah? I cross my arms over my chest, letting my chin lull down as I stare at the dusty concrete floor. I'm gonna try to see if TJ is still out front and get a ride home with him. I'll leave you be with your friends. I turn, beginning to move when I hear a growl from behind me. Ah, Puchika! He grabs my shoulder, spinning me around to face him again. Why do you have to be like this, huh? I didn't choose to be like this lit. Aye, aye, your adorable daftness. Do you know how, ha do you know how happy, I, happy I was when I overheard you just now? It was like a fucking fantasy, you know? And I started wondering why you didn't tell me, and then I get all mad now I've ruined this. You went to innocent-ass TJ out of all people, and you didn't even know about the similar situation with Flynn. Or me. It takes me a second to process being called adorable, a fantasy, and the reveal from Leo himself. I blink up at him. He blinks back at me. Wolf bites his tongue for a moment, trying to think before speaking. I wish I could go back in time and redo this. I'll kick the huevos out. I'll kick the huevos in of that scud who hurt you. I'll protect you from here on out. I won't hide things from you. You're the fucking gold nugget in this turd mine, yeah? I wouldn't be any different than these sloshed up bastards if it hadn't been for you guys. Think back to when we were little, yeah? I don't remember any of what you were all saying, but I remember being happy because of you and Jazz. And you know, as you grew and shit, I started seeing you different like. You made me happy when I was around you before, but now it's like, I don't know, Otter can't describe it. Well, it's just a whole new type of happy. Like, you know I fucking love you, but I love you, you know? So final point, you don't need to bother naive TJ with this sort of thing. You got me to talk to. My face starts to tingle, my heart thudding so loud in my chest I'm sure Leo can hear it. I inhale shakily. This can't be happening. I must still be dreaming. I just... I'm cut off as I spy an awkward young shadow leering in the doorway, something bulky in his paws. Leo notes my shift in attention, turning about to face the figure. I see his muscles tense beneath his t-shirt. Chase, don't leave. I'll be back in just a second. Uh, yeah, sure. Anything. I bump my knuckles together, watching the large wolf move to the doorway. I see him grab the shadowy fellow by the shoulder, trying to shift him away a little. The unknown guy thrusts what looks like a camera bag and tripod toward Leo. Leo shoves it right back. I see the wolf leaning close, his grip tightening on the other. He mutters something. The shadow whinges, his head turning. I think he's looking at me. Starting to feel rather awkward, I approach the two. As I do, however, the figure departs back towards the main factory floor. I'm never hanging out with anybody but those in our group from here on out, I swear, man. He curses something in Spanish under his breath. Alright, I'm going to pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank you all for I do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Anyway, if you all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our not safe for work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye